Welcome, Nokobongu. Hi, Tuanelo. Hey, Makiti. Mbukete. Sorry. I'm sorry. Welcome, everyone. Very well. <laughs> Welcome, guys. How are you today? What's new? Hey, Asonge. Oh, look at this. People are, are flooding in. I feel like it's a normal classroom. Yes. <laughs> yes. So while we're waiting for the rest to hop on, I actually wanted to tell you guys that we had a workshop on Friday evening. And the workshop was on preparing grade sevens for grade eight for their high school year. And we mm. gave them some tips. But I actually would love to hear like what help you guys adapt to your grade eight. I know this was abnormal circumstances with COVID and everything, but I'd love to get some um, feedback from you guys, what, what you did um, to adapt and yeah, just to, to try and do well in grade eight from grade seven. Such an interesting question. Yeah. Such an interesting question. <laughs> You can put it on the chat or if you guys want to unmute and let us know, I'd also love to hear your voice. Nokubonga, what did you do? You said you studied with your friends that helped you. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's great. To, I can imagine it's great to have friends when you go into from grade seven to grade eight that you have someone to yeah just support you and be there with you. Hey, mm -hmm. thanks for sharing, Nokubonga. I'm just thinking because the whole second lockdown happened when students were busy going into high school, and often high schools mm -hmm. have sort of an orientation program because this it tends to be very much bigger than primary school. So I would mm -hmm. imagine just finding where your locker is and all that stuff, which kind of must have been a bit different this year. I know. And especially because the schools were so like, it was two days first, just two days or three days going yeah. to school in a week. Um, so yeah, some, some of the year you guys were obviously at home working there and some of the, the times you were at school. So mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully next year won't, won't be the same, but we'll have to wait and see, hey? Luckily, we are adaptable people and very resilient. So, yeah. I'm also wondering, what did you... you got this. I'm also wondering... Okay. Uh, what... Thank oh. you so much for the feedback. No, Kubonga. If there's anyone else... Mm -hmm. I think my I audio think is being... Sorry, weird. I see my internet. <laughs> um, you said I was just you gonna also ask, wondering so just was it was there anything that they noticed over the year like one way of saying it is what helped you adapt but what is one thing looking back that you one lesson that you learned or what is one thing that stands out like obviously people you know you go through various struggles in the year but if you were telling yourself something earlier in the year what what would that one thing be and if i'm getting two teacher reflective that's fine too but i i'm just i'm curious like you often do learn things when you go through difficult situations so sure yeah. just yeah, one thing in the chat great. or, or audio mm. we'll give you a moment more because i know it's big reflective questions <laughs> mm. so Noku bonga said that um one thing that she can reflect on is to not have a lot of friends so okay. be patient and calm and believe in myself. I totally agree. The problem is getting to, I always find I have to breathe and calm myself down sometimes when I get stressed <laughs> and the habit of doing that takes more practice than it, it sounds, but it's, yeah, I agree with you, Moketi. Mm. I agree. Oh, yeah. All of these habitual things like you need to start forming that new habit as you adapt to new circumstances so 
something before we were about to start, but something this morning I thought about was like not checking my phone before I've had like 15 minutes to like get up, have a glass of water and just think about like what I want to do for the day. Like I was amazed how recently I've noticed how I pick up my phone and the moment I do, it starts this whole like Pandora's box of things. Um, mm. That was my little insight. Can <laughs> wow. Can I don't know if you can relate. relate. Yeah. <laughs> I, would so say, not- I would say my thing is uh, to be present. So when you're yeah. somewhere to be fully present there um, because life can go by so quickly and life can just take mm. you with. So instead of allowing life to take you to be where you are, and yeah. yeah, do what you need to do, not think about the next thing and the next thing. So Nokubonga said, find a friend group you feel safe in. I, I, I think that's a very good good tip, um, especially when you're going off to high school. It is quite a, it feels different. I, I can re- even remember <laughs> once upon a time in a land far, far away. Um, yeah. Thumbs up for that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, everyone. So I think we're about to start, um, but that Thanks, was fun. guys. A little reflection. Anything more from you, Ozan? No, nothing from you, Peter. Okay. So today, everyone, I'm going to be very flexible and I will adapt to the needs of the group. But I have a, um, I thought initially we'll start with a geometry question because I know a lot of you still want to write paper two. And so I thought if you could try and do this question to start with, uh, and then basically you have to fill in the missing word or the missing thing. So I'll give you a little bit of time. And then after you've done the warm-up activity, I will ask for some guidance as to what you want to focus on. I'm mainly focusing on paper two, though, based, my preparation is based around paper two, but I can adapt. So, um, yeah. So let's, let's think about this. What is an angle, an angle that's greater than 180 and less than 360? So if you were visualizing it, here is an angle that's less than 180. And so one that is greater than 180, but less than 360 would look like that. So I want to know, we can even call this A, B, C, D, and E. For question A, what is an angle greater than 180, but less than 360 called? And it's the green angle over here. And then for B, what is the supplement of 110? Now, the word supplement in maths has a very particular meaning. So, you know, if we were visualizing an angle of 110, the supplement would be here. So that's a, a hint for that one. Okay, and I'll give you a bit of time to see if you can answer those questions. And we'll go from there. Some of this is vocabulary, which I know can be a little bit tricky, but we may as well do that. Welcome to Bandile, to Keke, to Latando, Latando, to Ayabonga. I, if we didn't welcome you at the beginning, it is very good to have you with us. Um, if you could just pop your answers to these questions in the chat, that would be awesome. I'm going to give you about two more minutes. I've given some hints already. What do we call a triangle that has three sides that are of different lengths? So a triangle that may look something like that. And, and the, the, the sort of whiskers or whatever, they're just showing you these are different lengths. Oh, a song is on the ball. Answer's coming through. Now, there's no guarantees she's right, people. So let's lock. You can also still vote. I haven't looked at the answer's quality yet. Um, together, 37 and 53 are what type of angles? So that's another question. And then if lines are parallel, so lines that are parallel look they're an equal distance apart always. 
if lines are parallel and we cut them with a line like this, these are the co-interior angles here and here. What do we know about them? Okay, so I'd like one or two more people to lock in their answers. Again, research tells us what I've read that just the act of committing to an answer, even if you get it wrong, that process of, of kind of drawing up the resources to, to try and answer it helps you remember the final answer. So we know by just participating and being more active, it helps you remember the right answer. If you get it wrong initially, it's not really much of a problem. So let's try and lock in an answer. I see Moketi coming through with an answer. That's fantastic. So I'll let the cat out the bag, guys. You're quite correct. This is called a reflex angle. So normally when you have an angle, let's say that is less than 90, we call it acute. If the angle is greater than 90, but less than 180, it's called obtuse. And if we go the other way around, so for example, you know, what's left, this bit over here is called an obtuse angle. And as you all know, this thing over here is called a right angle or a right angle is like a quarter turn. Okay. Supplementary is a fancy word for saying adds up to 180. So the traditional supplementary angles are going to be the angles that are sort of made up on a straight line. And so the supplement of 110 is 70 degrees. What do we call a triangle that has three sides that are of different lengths. So just some more vocabulary. Um, we call a triangle where all the sides are different, a scalene triangle. So this would be called a scalene triangle. Uh, if all the sides were equal, it would be called an equilateral. And if two of the sides were equal, we would call it, I, I always forget how to spell this, isosceles, but I could be wrong. Okay, isosceles triangle. So this relates to the, the sides. However, there's actually a relationship between the sides and the angles too. So in a scalene triangle, all the sides are of a different uh, length and all the angles are also of a different uh, size or different magnitude. So there's no you know, angles that are all the same. In an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60. And in an isosceles we, triangle, we talk about the base angles being equal. So that's just some extra vocab revision I'm, I'm throwing in there. Uh, what else? Together, 37 and 53 are, uh, the fancy word is complementary. You may be thinking complementary as in like a compliment, it's slightly different complementary, or you could say um, a right angle. That would actually be correct too. So you could say it's a right angle. And then what's the last one? Rub this out. Uh, if lines are parallel, then the co-interior angles add up to 180 degrees. So if you've got two parallel lines, and we're going to talk more about this today, and then you have something called a transversal, and you may be thinking transversal, what a weird name. Well, trans means to travel. So the line travels from this side to this side. Trans as in transport. So transversal. Um, and so when you get the shape and the lines are parallel, these are called co-interior angles. Now, they're not equal to each other, but together they add up to 180 degrees, or we say they are supplementary, like earlier on. Okay, so that was a warm up. Give me some thumbs up if you found that helpful, and thumbs down if you're like, whoa, I've never seen this before. Slow down, man. I want to see some thumbs. I see one thumb so far. 
It's your time to shine, guys. Okay, so KK is feeling a bit, ugh, haven't seen this before, that's fine. Uh, who else? I saw another fan, Lutando's feeling okay. Okay, fantastic. So obviously, I see another thumbs down, so we're about evenly split. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay with this geometry because I feel like I haven't done much of it with you guys so far. But if there's a topic that you really want to do, could you chat? And then if I miss it, Ozan will tell me about it. Otherwise, I'll check it. But otherwise, I'm assuming that for now, I'm going to stay with, with geometry. Okay. And let's go to something like this. Okay, now in geometry, often the relationship between parallel lines and angles comes up. So you'll notice here that I, let's make it a bit bigger. And so guys, also, if you, if you can't see, just um, shout and then I will adapt the screen. So this line over here and this line over here are parallel lines. Now, there are all sorts of angles that are created when you run a transversal across the parallel lines. And I want you to identify the relationship between each of these. So what's the relationship between A, B, E, E? Oh, that A, B, E, and F. I think that meant to be A, B, C, and F. So I'm going to make that change. That should be A, B, C, and F. So, and I'm going to call this question A, question B, C, D and E, and I would love for you to think, what are the names of the relationships um, between the angles? This is really important. This is like geometry 101. Back in the day when they first started studying geometry, the earliest known textbook is called The Elements by a guy called Euclid, and he was pretty into this idea of parallel lines and the relationships between angles. And whenever we travel some where whenever we navigate, we use these ideas. Okay, so we want to make sure you know what are these relationships called. Okay, so what I want you to do, Latando, is I want you to put A, and then I want you to put what you think goes with A, where A is talking about the relationship between these angles. And then I want B, where we're talking about the relationship between A and F. So I want you to be specific about what relationships we're talking about. Ah, I see the word corresponding angles. You're in the right ballpark. The question is, what name with who? It's when I'm learning students' names in the classroom and I'm new and I'm new to the class person. I've got to get the right name with the right person. Okay. So we have to match what is A's name? What is B's name? So sometimes in class, teachers talk about the F shape and they talk about the C shape and they talk about the, actually no, sometimes they talk about the U, so it, like fun. Some teachers talk about fun. Um, but, and that's just of giving sort of simpler names to the relationships. But I'll help you now. I just want to see you have a go. Some of the words we would use would be alternating angles, corresponding angles, co-interior angles. But I want to know which pairs here. So I'll give you some more time because I can see you guys need to think about this. So the first one, A. Okay, so I'll do, I'll do the first one for you. This first one are all the angles around a point or the angles in a revolution. So we often say the angle, or you could say the angles around a point. Now, the abbreviation for angle we haven't seen before, but it just shaped like this. And then it's now, does anybody know what on the point add up to the revolution add up to 360? So these guys all have to add up to 360. Okay, 
Okay, so now I want answers for B, C, D, and E. Or you could use one, two, three, four, five. Uh, A and F, you're quite right. They are called vertically opposite angles. So vert, often we see this abbreviation, op angles. And vertically opposite angles are actually always equal to each other. So it's almost like A and F will always be equal to each other. So that's B taken care of. So cross that out, cross that out, what have we got left? B and F. So B and F are indeed supplementary angles, or we could say that they are called angles on a straight line. So, uh, so th angles on, often you, you see this abbreviation where angles on straight line, or you could say, uh, supplementary supplementary angles. That's the name of the relationship. Normally, the reason you would give would be just the angles on a straight line. So that was 3.3 B and F. Let me use my yellow highlighter. Can you see these are on a straight line? That's what we call them, angles on a straight line, and they add up to 180 degrees. Oh, I really must turn Siri off. Why is... One <laughs> it, it makes me think what else she's listening to. <laughs> okay. Um, F and C. Right? So where are F and C? Let's find them. So F and C to me look, look like they're also just angles on a straight line. Yep. Because, you know, they're, they're right next to each other. Now, these aren't equal to each other. What they are going to be is they're going to add up to 180. So I'm just going to say angles on a straight line. And then A and C, oh, that's not very exciting. That's also going to just be uh, angles on a straight line. Okay. I want to make my own questions now because I feel like this question has left out some interesting learning moments. I want to create my own teaching moments. So what about the relationship? I want to know about the relationship between F and E. We'll call this question six. For question seven, I want to know about the relationship between F and H. And for question eight, I want to know about the relationship between F and D. Okay, so guys, I've, I've uh, created my own relationships. And then once you know what relationship they are, I want you to tell me a little bit like, are they equal? Do they add up to something? I want a bit more information like that. No, oh, I see the information is flying through here. So F and E, the two angles that I am talking about would be those two. And you're quite right. These are all called alternate angles. Often we just call alt angles with a dot there. Uh, F and H, where's F and H? So F and H, often we would show the students the shape over here. And these are called corresponding angles. And then F and D, are indeed going to be F and D. These are so. Now, the thing important thing to remember is alternate angles, if they're between parallel lines, are going to be equal. So, but let me use my big highlighter. So, these are going to be equal. Corresponding angles between parallel lines are going to be equal. And co interior angles aren't going to be equal, but they are going to be. Oh, you can't see that. Uh, they are going to be supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. 
Okay. So those are important basics for geometry, and we're going to actually use this knowledge now going forward. Well done, everyone. That was that was good. Uh, let me go to a question like this one. So this is from exactly what we've just been doing. So let me explain in this particular um, question, I don't want you just to find, no, actually, I want you to put the reason in here. So for each of the following questions, give only the correct reason for the corresponding statement. Okay. And we'll call this question one, two, three, four, five, and six. I want you to see, can you match the correct reason for the statement using the previous exercise that we've just done? So what reason do we need to use if we say that X plus 40 equals 180? What reason do we need if we say A equals C? And so again, if you want to give me feedback for your answers, you just put them in the format one to six in the chat. That's the way I'm going to mark them. But I think you guys have all got perfect, Moketi. Absolutely perfect. Perfect. Angles on a straight line. The only thing I would do is to save time is I would just write it. But I know you can't write this like this in the chat. So angles on a straight line. Let me put a dot there to show it's an abbreviation. A equals C, perfect. Vertically opposite angles. Let me put a dot there for the abbreviation. Okay, so that's well done. We've got the first two handled. What's the next one? Uh, uh, this one, angles around a point, perfect, or angles in a revolution is another way of saying that. So that's that one, that one. Okay, now what is this one? E, aha. Uh, I see, Asonga, I see that you put an answer there for five and you've said, how do we know you're quite right it's uh I'll, yep you're on the right track there now there's something else we have to do that's a little bit special here what else you guys are giving the correct reasons but something that i didn't do previously is we actually have to list the parallel lines that are involved so i'm going to show you what i mean now so you guys are quite correct that for four uh, it's going to be co-interior angles but we have to and list the parallel lines involved. So let's find E and F. The parallel lines that are involved with E and F are these two parallel lines. And then the transversal is this thing here. Now, we have to list the parallel lines that are involved. So I'm going to write here, PQ is parallel to RS. And this is because the relationship of co-interior angles adding up to 180, it only holds when the lines are parallel that make up the shape. If these lines were not parallel, the relationship of adding up to 180 would not hold. So that's why they're like, listen, you better include your parallel lines. Otherwise, how do we know the relationship is going to hold in the way that you want it to? Now, a lot of students do forget that. And in theory, in some schools, they do take a mark off for that if you don't include your parallel lines. Uh, okay, so the set for number five, E equals G is going to be alternate angles. And again, we have to see where are the parallel lines involved. The good news is PQ parallel to RS. And then what's the last one? I equals G. Where is it hiding? Okay. 
if i equals g they're talking about these two and their relationship is corresponding angles and corresponding angles are equal when they're parallel lines involved and that's what the question says it says i equals g now this time the parallel lines involved are different the parallel lines involved in this shape are here and here and so when i write them down i'm going to write down uh, r s parallel to t u and so that's the main new thing i want you to think about is that when you write down a reason if it involves these co-interior alternate or corresponding you write down the parallel lines that are involved at the same time give me a give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down about how you're feeling about that question uh, i just want to get some feedback i know that yeah you know, i just want to get a sense of how the group is feeling okay i see some thumbs uh, Alzan, is there anything that I'm missing from the, our diligent students today due to my multitasking? <laughs> no, Peter, everything still looks good. Okay, eyes on the prize. Okay, fantastic. Okay, um, let's look for another question that tests a bit of our knowledge. Um, let us look at, um, okay. Let's do a bit of triangle stuff. I want you to classify each of these triangles. Now by classify, you're going to give them a, a name about how they're described. So I'll call this triangle number one and triangle number two. And I want you to put in the chat, what is the triangle that you are how would you describe it, right? Or classify is, is basically saying, and normally you classify a triangle using its sides or by using it angles or by using both. So I wanna see how would you describe triangle one? How would you describe and classify triangle two? Using the words that I mentioned earlier in the lesson. I'm gonna get some water while you guys do that. Hmm. So Alzan, is this uh, ringing any bells from, from a past life? Are you recognizing some of these um, <laughs> these problems? I definitely am. I won't be able to say that I, I'll be so, um, how can I say, confident in doing this okay. for grade eight. I think you guys are doing a better job than I would. <laughs> but yeah, it rings a bell. Many students have. Okay, well, that's good. I'm glad. Mm. But I'm learning, I'm learning as I'm sitting oh, here. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Okay, everyone, um, let's get those answers coming in. What, what is triangle one, you know, what do you think is being told to you? I mean, I suppose the one thing that jumps out at me is that not all the sides are, are the same length. Um, and, oh, I see, oh, Asanga, you are on the ball. Um, so the first word that comes to mind over here is scalene triangle because all the sides are a different length. But there's something even more about that, and I'll come back to that in a moment. If we look at the second one, this one has two angles that are the same, which makes me think isosceles triangle. So that is the most basic classification but there's even one more additional thing and if you have seen the unit i did on pythagoras you'll recognize that if you take the longest side in this right angle triangle so this is a scalene actually you know what i don't need to go into pythagoras this symbol over here is a right angle so we say it's a scalene 
a right triangle or um, essentially. And then this one over here would be an isosceles triangle, but all the angles are less than 90. So we, we would say it's an acute isosceles triangle. Acute just means all the angles are less than 90. If you had a triangle like this, and it looks like it's bending over backwards, okay, like it's falling over. This is called an obtuse triangle. And if all its sides were of a different length, it would be an obtuse scalene triangle. Okay, so you seem to have done okay there. Um, I'm going to move on to the next one. Let's make this a bit bigger. And let's just get rid of this over here. So now we're going to mix in a little bit of algebra and a little bit of, um, let's get rid of, let's make this smaller. Give me a moment while I just move that down. It's like living in digital land, the normal rules of moving things around don't apply. Okay, so this is your job. Your job is to calculate the value of W and X and then classify the triangle. So if we look here, we have a triangle, we'll call this triangle A, we'll call this triangle B. The question wants to know what is the value of W? And once you find the value of W, they kind of want you to find the values of the other angles involved and classify the triangle. I'll give you a hint. One of the most important things about triangles is a theorem that says all the angles in a triangle will add up to, we should say rather, so the sum of the, sum of the angles in a triangle equals 180 degrees. And so I want you to try and use that idea together with a little bit of algebra to, to answer this question. And if you need a hint, then I want you to put a thumbs down in the chat. If you feel like you can take this on as it stands, put a thumbs up. Okay, so if you need a hint, thumbs down. If you need a, if you feel like you're like, I can do this uh, on my lonesome, thumbs up. And I'm watching for the thumbs. Okay, first one says I need a hint. Need a hint. Uh, solo mission, solo mission. Okay, so we're, we're a mixture. Okay, this is what we do. The relationship, a triangle has these three um, angles. So in this case, there will be the angle M, the angle N, and the angle P. We know that those angles add up to 180. So we're going to set up a relationship, an equivalence relationship, uh, in fact, let me do it closer to this one so it doesn't get confusing as to what triangle. So the first thing I would do is I would say, look, we know that this angles if we, it's going to add up to 180 in total. So this one over here, this one over here, this one over here are going to add up to 180. Now, if we take those angles away, could we not write it as 180 equals W plus 2W plus 3W. And then we have to give a reason. And the reason is um, the sum of angles in triangle. In fact, that would actually be fine. Sum of angles in a triangle, or some people would say sum of angles in a triangle equal 180. So that's my hint. You set up this relationship and you give a reason. The reason says, I know why I can suddenly add up these three angles and make them equal to 180. And now you have to use your knowledge of algebra to isolate what W is. So in the algebra section of grade eight, you would have learned about something called like terms. So you know, if you have one, what's some, a word that starts with W, um, wetsuit. If you have one wetsuit, and you get two more wetsuits, and you have get three more wetsuits, how many wetsuits do you have in total? Well, as long as they're all wetsuits, 
you can actually rewrite this equation as 180 equals 6w. So this relationship now is in a much more simple form. And so now could you work out what w, but what is one, let's say, um, you know, what is one wetsuit worth? Or what is, um, I want to know what value of w do I need to times by six to give me 180. And that should tell me, in fact, I'll do it with you. So the rule that I use is if I'm solving an equation and I want to get a variable by itself, and the variable is w, I always use the opposite process to the thing next to the variable. So at the moment, what I have is I have a six times w. So what's the opposite of six times w? It's to divide by six. But if I've now divided by six on one side, I've unbalanced the whole universe because it used to be equal. Now I've divided one side by six. I can't still be equal. So I have to do this. Now, I designed that process to get rid of the six. So six over six is one. And so on this side, I have W. Now what's left behind, 180 divided by six is just 30 degrees. Now the whole point of this journey was to work out what these angles were. And I've worked out that this is 30 degrees. And this one over here is two times 30, which is 60. And this one over here is three times 30, which is 90. So now that I know this is 30, this is 60, this is 90, can I classify the triangle? I think I can. This is going to be a right uh, scalene triangle. So right scalene triangle. How do I know that? Well, there's a 90 degree angle. And how do I know it's scalene? Well, the moment all my angles are different, all my sides will be different too. So this side will be the longest, this side will be the shortest. Uh, another little trick is the biggest angle is always opposite the biggest side. So 90 is opposite the biggest side, 60 is opposite the second biggest, 30 is op opposite the smallest. So that's a right scalene triangle or a scalene right triangle. Now, using what I've just showed you, I'd like you to try and do the second one by yourself. And I'm going to, while you do that, I'm going to try and find the chat window wherever it's gone. Uh, yeah. Okay. I see some answers have come through. I'll give you a moment more. So using the logic from before, I'm going to say X plus two X plus two X is 180 degrees. And the reason is the sum of angles in triangle equal an 80. I have to collect these things called like terms. So there's one X, two X, two X. It's gonna give me five X. Oh, okay. I'll slow down more Katie, no problem. I love that. Because we're live, you can just send me a message. So that's no problem at all. Mm. Ooh. Oh, sorry, you want me to speed up? Okay. So X is 180 divided by five is 36. And now this is 36, this is 72, that's 72. And so this type of triangle is gonna be an acute isosceles triangle. It's acute because all the angles are 90 and it's isosceles because there's two of them, two that are equal. Okay, let's switch it up and do a little bit something different. 
Oh, we've done enough of triangles. Done all the ones. I want you to this. want to. So here is the question. And there's many different ways to do this. I want you to solve for X and Y. So here's Y and here is X. I want you to work out what those values are and I want you to give reasons. And this is a typical exam question where you're given this. What this means is this line is parallel to this line. And this line over here is parallel to that. That's what these are showing you. Can you guys hear the siren? I don't know why. <laughs> Let me see if I can close my. Okay, um, so we should be getting the relationship between x. Now, you may not have done this first, but I think I would have done this one first. x and 145 are co-interior angles, and so we know that x would be 35 degrees, but we still need to write the reason, so we're going to write co-interior angles. But we also have to list the parallel lines. L, D, E. Okay, so that's that one tick. It looks to me, now again, you can do this in different ways, but I think this one and this one are what's called corresponding. And so y will equal 145, because you can see that corresponding shape. Maybe I should, sometimes people talk about it being like an F shape. And the reason is going to be corresponding angles. And this time we're gonna use, okay, this is, it's almost perfect the song game, but can you see what are lines that are involved this time? are going to be not A, B, and D, E. They're going to be um, N, K, and top down. So we'll say K, N, parallel to S. Because if you look at the F shape, you can see that the parallel lines are going through that. Okay, well done though. So the fact that you noticed that means you really understand this really well. So one, well done. Okay, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down about this question or how you're feeling about this, this thing. Um, okay, because we're going to, I'm going to do one more question today, but I think I'm going to choose it from a slightly different, different area. Okay, so also see some thumbs down. So we need a bit more practice. Okay, so it's a mixture where there's a few more thumbs up and thumbs down, but there's definitely more work to be done. Uh, should we, you know what, maybe we should just do one more geometry question, then we make it like today's all about um, those ones. Let's have a look at this old exam. Should do some perimeter, no. Ha. Huh. Well, let's do this one. Let's finish with this. You can see this is from June 2015, I think at one of my old schools. And I want you to, this is a different type of shape. 
Okay. Well done, Mulketi. What type of shape is this shape over here in question 10? Just, I'd love to hear someone's voice. Be brave. What type of shape is this? It's a trapezium. I believe in you guys. You can do it. Aha. Okay. It is a trapezium, although to really be a trapezium, it would have to have those things there. So I agree. It, it looks like a trapezium. At the moment, though, all I can say is it's a four-sided shape or a quadrilateral. However... I'll talk to you about whether we know it's trapezium because a trapezium does traditionally look like that, but it's got to have parallel lines, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now, all quadril, you know, like triangles add up to 180. What do quadrilaterals all add up to? And I'd love to hear another voice again. It was so good to hear a voice. I think I want to hear some more. What do quadrilaterals add up to? They're not as popular as triangles, I know, but they also have their own funky number to go with them. Should I give you a hint? Well, what if I split a quadrilateral in two? 360 degrees. Perfect, yes. All quadrilaterals add up to 360. Okay, now use that four-sided shapes add up to 360. Can you find me a, um, can you find me the value of, of X and ultimately all the different angles? And then I want to see, is this really a, once we know the size of the angles, we can talk about whether it's definitely a trapezium. It looks like a trapezium, but it, but I can't say for sure yet, but I'm going to leave that question with you for the moment. So you know all the angles add up to 360, but I want you to do some working out first. So sum of angles in a quad is what we often say. So we'll start by going X plus what else do we need to do still? I'm back. Are you still with me, guys? <laughs> we are still with you, Peter. Everything okay? We are all good. I haven't been hit by an asteroid. Um, so <laughs> I'm still with you. I don't know what happened. Um, so who knows? Um, Welcome okay. back. Uh, so X, so it's 3X, 4X, 5X plus 60 is 360. And then... If we take away 60 from both sides, uh, 
So basically I have to deal with this fact that there's a 60 and I want to isolate it. So I take away 60 from both sides and I get 300. And then the last step is I need to divide both sides by five. And if I do that, I should get X is 60. Let me just make sure I've, yes, X is 60. And so now what I'm going to do is, uh, let's have a look. So I know that that was X is 60. So if X is 60, then what are the other angles? Well, that's 60. This is 120. This is going to be 80. And this is going to be 100. And so now to answer your question about the trapezium. So uh, basically, this is a trapezium because you can you see the, compl the complementary angles add up to 180, not complementary, the co-interior angles add up to 180. And so because these angles are adding up to 180, I know that this is indeed a trapezium, as we discussed at the beginning. Okay, um, guys, I think that we are going to call it a day for today. Um, if you could just give us a, yeah, just again, thumbs up or thumbs down about how you're feeling. And then also, I'd love to know when are you writing your exams? If you could just put that in the chat. So just give us an emoji or something about how you're feeling about today's session. And you can be honest, I won't take it personally either way. Um, and then I'd love to know in the chat, when are your exams? Could you put the date in the, in the, um, in the chat? I'm losing my words. Alzan, I think you're gonna have to take over now. Are you ready? Maybe some maths. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, let's go to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> So Asonge is writing on the 26th. Okay. So Anelo let's, already wrote. Let's see the dates. Okay, so Anelo has already written. Because we were thinking about doing an extra revision session on Wednesday, and, and I wanted to know how many of you are still going to be writing. Um, I just want to get a feel. So today. So today is the 22nd. So then um, Asonge, you're writing on Friday. So you'll you'll be learning and I'm not writing this term. Okay. Abdullah wrote today. Um, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, no problems on Um Okay. Cause yeah, we're going to try and put together some sort of cool revision session for Wednesday. Um, but even if you have written already, um, we'd love to have you here because Ultimately, it's practice over time that makes you improve. And so we'd mm -hmm. highly recommend, you know, continuing with this into the rest of the year and, and next year. But mm. I think most of them are either writing this week or have written already, it seems. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, over to you, Ozan. Mm. So there's nothing from my side. Um, it's basically just then Wednesday that we will see you guys again. And like Peter said, uh, even though you have already written, first of all, thanks to those guys who have written already, that's still here. It just shows that you are persistent in um, yeah, developing your understanding in maths. And I know that this this work you will still use next year. So well done for for um, yeah, keeping it up and still coming and showing up. And then, <laughs> well done, yeah, I think... It's it's only it's only um next week that we'll start with the Q and A, Peter. Or yeah, I mean, look. To be honest, time. we're very flexible now. So if you if you are really wanting to, and also actually, do you want, to be honest, a lot of the stuff comes up in grade nine. So if there's a particular area that you want to focus on, because we're such a small group, we're very flexible, and so I'm mm -hmm. quite happy to teach you around whatever you want to learn about. And so I think there's some facility where they can send it into you with um, Ozan. Or, or, so you can always just let me know, like I said before, take this opportunity to just, you know, I'm here to help you uh, and, you know, uh, you're being diligent by being here. So let's make the best use of it. Mm, mm. Maybe, Peter, uh, if the learners comes with their own questions or mm. would you like them to send it to you beforehand? 
Look, I mean, I'm happy for them to, to do it live. The, the problem often is how do I get it from them live? So it, it would probably be better if they sent it like, even if it's 10 or 15 minutes before the lesson, if they, if they just, do they have a way of sending text questions to you or pictures? Yes. Or? yes. So they can send, they can send test questions. Normally Coco answers that or she'll, she'll start to answer that again. So if you guys yeah. just go into your Toby app, into the chat box, then you can send your questions there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, what they can also do is um, maybe just type it into the chat. I don't know if that's yeah. like. Can, can they put, a, can you put an image into the chat? Uh, I think you, can you? Uh, yes, you can. Ah, who knew? You see, this is why you need to ask questions, guys. <laughs> this is why you need to. Um, that's very all right. cool. We are from a computer or from a Dropbox. You can put a picture in here okay. as well. So I'm, I'm quite happy in the next lesson. If you bring your questions, I will gladly, um, I will gladly answer those. Okay, cool. Thanks, Peter. Okay, guys, that's all from our side. Thank you so much for being here. Take care of yourselves, and then we'll see you again on Wednesday. Totally. Cheers, everyone. Bye bye. Um, cheers, everyone. Bye, Koketsu. Bye, bye Moketi. Bye bye. Bye, Ayabonga. Thanks, Asunge. Bye, Moketi. Bye, Koketsu. Okay. All right.